Welcome back to the Cannon Factory, an elegant podcast for a more civilized age and your source for everything Star Wars. I'm your host, Sean, and I'm joined by... This is Matt. This is Richie. Brennan. I'm Mike. And Adam. And we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, all kinds of things that are Star Wars related. If you're here for Star Wars, you're in the right spot. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to start off with talking to our local bookworm, uh, Isaac Lacey. I don't feel like I'm that much of a bookworm. Our local Star Wars enthusiast, our yep. local Star Wars book reader sometimes during his free time. Well, yeah. So yeah, slash comic. So Ike, you've read the Phasma book and you've been really yeah. up to date with the Phasma comics and well, you're yes. saying they're starting to intertwine a bit. Right. So yeah. So what they're doing, and I don't know for our listeners out there who aren't quite obsessed as we are with Star Wars, you may or may not know that essentially before every one of the major releases, that being The Force Awakens currently and The Last Jedi, they release a series of um, smaller canon material, either being comics or books. That are literally uh, titled, uh, li- basically journey lead up to, to yeah, the journey Force to the Force Awakens or journey to the Last Jedi, and then they release series, and somehow the series is tie into the books, so uh, or tie in, I'm sorry, to the movie uh, right. that there are some specific things. So uh, right now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the only three pieces of canon material that are out that do that is the Phasma book, the Phasma comic, and the Leia book. Cool. Um, so I've read all the Phasma stuff. The The most recent Phasma stuff comic actually came out today, and I went out and read it uh, so I could be ready for this. Oh, proud of you. Um, I'm not quite done with the Leia book, but I have That's a pretty, pretty good. good feeling of where it's going to go. Yeah. It's uh, based on based on what I've heard from other people who have quite finished it because it's only been out of, uh, like a week or so. Um, and also what I've read, it's and it's also a young adult novel, so I'm diving into that chick flick 16-year-old yeah. book. Yeah, there's some... So uh, it's pretty. I don't. I don't think there's going to be any major twists that I don't see coming. I guess is yeah. what I'm saying. So uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess I'll answer two major things at least with Phasma that I feel like everybody's kind of on everybody's mind, um, mostly surrounding the results of the Force Awakens, which is why did Phasma suck so much? I mean, I mean that's fair, right? I feel like that's a fair question. It's like we build up to this really cool chromed out. Yeah, there's this chrome stormtrooper. Too. We're gonna play up the fact that she's a female because you know that this really has been a thing. Going, Sir, yeah, the villagers, the villagers, and that was it. And yeah, and then <laughs> and then she just like willy nilly lets them stuff her in a like, trash compactor oh, and schmuck, turn down the shields. You got me. Oh, you can put a gun to my head. I guess I'll turn down these shields for you then. Whoops. So yeah, it, I feel like it does a pretty good job of indirectly addressing why she would do that so easily. Um, Richie, you have a question? Can we talk about Phasma memes, though? Those Phasma, yeah. Go for it. Submit your blaster for inspection. <laughs> <laughs> we all just look at him at the table, and then he just laughs because he doesn't know what else to do. Yeah, pretty Thanks much. Thanks for your contribution. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Carry on. All right. So, anyway. So, yeah. So, the books essentially follow her. <laughs> Um, as she, I'm not going to go into a huge synopsis of this, but it basically follows her and how she got caught up in the first order. Okay. Um, and basically it's kind of like a, the book follows it this way. It's kind of like a Mad Max Fury Road scenario. The planet that she's on is really, really desolate. Uh, that people can't make outside contact. So they're very like, they had really good tech. Now they have terrible tech. Do they give you the name of the planet? Uh, it's Parnassus. I don't know if I'm saying that right because I haven't heard it. See, I just wanted it to be Jakku because I really <laughs> wanted her to be the girl uh, from the end of the Aftermath trilogy. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, I didn't. So she, yeah, she's not from Jakku. She's from Par- Parnassus. Par- Parnassus, okay. And essentially, uh, she betrays her local clan uh, because she comes into contact with Brendel Hux, which is in the Aftermath trilogy, right, and is Armitage, the guy you see in The Force Awakens' father, correct, um, who has been recruiting kids to pull them in to become uh, the First Order trooper. 
So basically, he crash lands on the planet. They're like, we need to get to the ship. Brendel's like, if you get me to the ship, you can join the First Order and get out of this hellhole. And she's like, cool. So basically, the whole movie is them, or the whole book is them traveling across uh, deserts, rocks, and desolate area um, to try to get to it to leave. So what you see her quickly do to the ship to leave that he that he crash landed on. So because he ejected, mm-hmm. got it. So it's pretty far off. Right. So they basically get chased by her clan. And lo and behold, her it comes down to at the ship, she has to make a decision. Do I kill all of my Wait, clan members? Spoiler Go ahead. alerts. Well, I think, we're, I think we're good on spoilers. I don't think anybody's going to read. I mean, you guys don't even read the book. So if our listeners Whoa, read the book, I that's read not true. books. All hey. power to you. Proud Whoa. Of you. I, I read lots of books. Well, I just okay, have not so read I'm going to go ahead and say spoilers books. if you're not interested yeah. in reading the Phasma book. So basically, she betrays all of her, her clan members that she lived her whole oh, life with, shoot. kills them all, and bails because she's got a better opportunity, which Freaking essentially Brienne explains the reason as to why she's so easy to do it with the First Order. Right. And there's a few other minor moments, cool but callback. basically she's she's willing to betray anyone to get a better life and a better survival. So if that means betraying the First Order, then she does. Spoiler alert, she kills Brendel Hux. She's like, even the guy, Whoa. even the guy that she Whoa. saves, that saves her, she's willing to kill. Dang. So, and, and Armitage knows it. The son knows it. Yeah, Armitage don't care. Yeah, and Armitage don't care. He, Armitage want that Did power. He saw, just question yeah. for those that don't know. So... Armitage Hux that we see in Force Awakens did not get along with his dad. He did not get along with his dad. His dad beat him, and dad was like, "You're a sniffling little, sh- and you suck." Yeah, yeah, yes, very much so. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, did not get along with him, and basically, with the, how they explain the reason that in the Force Awakens is that she shut down the shields is that she multiple times is willing to kill, steal, kill, and destroy for the betterment of herself, and does not care about the whole. She was completely self invested. Wow. So, uh, pretty good. So the comic picks up, not to take an hour of your time, but the comic picks up immediately after she gets out of the trash compactor. And basically, she tracks down the person who was the last person to saw her turn off the shields. She chases them down. And uh, that's how she escapes um, uh, Starkiller right before it blows up because she's on a ship chasing down the person who was... She's, he's the loose end that needs tied up uh, uh, to, to make sure that nobody knows that she turned off interesting. The, the shields. So that's where we are now. There's only that three in the comic or in the book. That's in the comic. Okay. So, so yeah. the ultimate loose end then is is Finn. Yes, I would say that's a good point. I didn't think about that. And yeah. they make a big point as well in the books that right. she's very good at tying up loose ends. So basically, nobody knows that she's from Parnassus. Huh. Nobody knows. Like the only person that would know, like some would be Armitage, and Armitage wasn't there for any of the stuff on the planet. Only Brendel, and Brendel was a loose end that knew she, yeah. she doesn't want anybody to know where she's from. Right. So ultimately, I would say the books and the comic have made me fall in love with her as a character. Yeah, it's a really cool. lot. When I came out of the Force Awakens, saying like that was a huge letdown, probably one of the biggest well, letdowns. Yeah, of- because like we just want to learn about her character. Yeah, and, you know, you can't really have that exposition in a movie with a tertiary right. character. So. so I know that was like a long spill, but to give you guys a little bit of context, that's how it's going to tie. Th- those are the the themes and the things that I think are going to tie into uh, the Last Jedi. So I think that's actually a really good tie into what we were talking about in last week's episode about characters like Snoke that we're probably not going to get a whole lot of backstory on right. in the films, yeah. but if you're a hardcore fan like us, you have things like, well, hopefully for Snoke, but at least for Phasma, you have things like novels to yeah. to kind of, like you said, make you fall in love with the character. So. Right, and I think it confirms a lot of like the theories and thoughts that we've had on how the movies are developed, that basically like they didn't really have a chance to give Phasma more screen time, and so she kind of got the shaft as a character, but they had an opportunity to turn around and tell a, a better story with her that made me like her a lot. Like she's probably one of my fir- my favorite characters in the trilogy now. Right. Uh, based on that. So go read it. Sorry I spoiled it. <laughs> read um, it anyway. But it is, uh, I, I, I left out a lot, but it is like basically there's multiple callbacks to Mad Max. She ends up in, a, in an arena fighting like a local person, like barehanded, brawling. It's nuts. That it's pretty really cool. really cool. So anyway, check that out. The Leia book, uh, all that they've really said is that uh, her dad had a base on Crate. She goes there. 
which is cool. Her dad had a base on crate. A base on crate. It was yeah. his so hidden her... base that he was doing everything from to start the rebellion. Oh. She found it, even though they thought they deleted all the information on it. Correct. So he's like, "F, if you can find it, then correct." You, you said it's good. Have you read most of it, or did you just I'm listen on, to some videos? Or I'm on, I'm on chapter like 25 right now. Okay, that's about where I am too. What's, what's or time, no time period for this? Right, right, right before a new hope. Okay. Um, yeah. I think, I think, if I'm well, not mistaken, before Rogue One. Pre Rogue One, yes, yeah. you're right. So, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to lead up into the scene in, Ro- in Rogue One that you see her on the ship. Yeah, That's she's like she's finding out that her parents are a part of a rebellion, but yes. she doesn't know how to what extent, correct, or how like dangerous they are, and she wants to be a part of it, but her parents are like, no, that's not going to happen. It also introduces Laura Dern's character, um, and you may have seen more of her because I think you are a few chapters ahead of me, um, but she hasn't had much of a role yet except just kind of being around. Whoa, so like that far back? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. She's like a teenager. Six, yeah, I think she's 16. 16. She just she turned 16. 16. Yeah. So And there's like one part where she meets a guy and he's like, oh, you remind me of somebody. Yeah. And you're like, oh, she's like, yeah. oh, no. Like, and he's like, oh. you like." He knows he's pa- is Padme's kid, essentially. Yeah, so yeah. It, you'd have to read it to kind of get some of the details, but I think like there's an episode in Rebels season two or three where she, she visits Lothal. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she's a part of the she's a part of the rebellion then though. Yes, but so I'm pretty sure it's going to lead like right up into that, or probably. really close to that, or even maybe mention it. So it's like right on the cusp of uh, that. So basically, it just introduces is it Vice Admiral Haldo. What's her? What's yes. the? Yes, that's right. Introduces her a little bit. Um, has some suggestions, which is interesting that she may be LGBT. Um, that kind of suggests that a little bit, which is kind of an interesting take in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And then I um, saw saw a little bit of that in aftermath. Aftermath, too. yeah, as well. Yeah. Right. Um, which is interesting. And then yeah, basically they just kind of talk. From what I've had, they ha- there hasn't really been very much character development except for the fact that she's just kind of around. Um, Because she's kind of working through a... uh, Do they kind of establish a rivalry, her and Leia? um, Not that I had seen, no. Interesting. So actually, it seemed kind of like a friendship. She just doesn't really know how to take her because she's kind of eccentric. She's always changing her hair color, which you see in pictures. There's there's a part where they kind of bond. You'll see it once you come up. Gotcha. But yeah, uh, Crate crate was kind of interesting, the the glimpse I've got into it so far. But yeah, I mean, I I enjoyed it. Um, But check it out. As I said, it's kind of a young... Yeah, it's, yeah it's, a, so it's young adult. Like, t- there's right. some, I think. some smoochies to be having. Oh. Yeah, uh, I think from most people that I, I've I've heard from, like Pablo and Matt, uh, Matt Martin, their favorite uh, canon book so far is Lost Stars, which is also a young adult novel. Yeah, that's which, interesting. Uh, I, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. I know that Alex from Star Wars Explained. Yeah, he loved Lost Stars too. He said that he thought it was better than Phasma, okay. and I haven't finished it to make that argument. I really, really enjoyed Phasma, right. but. He kind of reviews all stuff and I that guess happens it, every month. It comes but. down to what kind of what kind of book you're looking for when it when you read these things. Right. I might I tend to like the action adventure more than the the love lovey moment. dovey. Yeah. yeah. But I mean it's well, that's your both, loss, Brennan. Well, yeah. I mean they're both they're both good books though. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I so far I've liked it. So we can move on. I didn't want to take no, I mean, took ten minutes to do that real quick, but um, I'm excited to see how Crate plays out. It's going to be really interesting. Um, also, all the hidden stuff that's going on with um, it's when Brain Dead to Leia's dad, uh, Bail Organa. Bail Organa. Bail needs his own book. Yeah, they're Bale. being like in, in, in Ahsoka, in Ahsoka, and now this. They're kind of like showing that he's doing a lot behind the scenes. Ooh, how about a Bail anthology film? Yeah, Bail anthology film would be dope. But how he kind of brought the because he's even to a be book the, like him, like th- like book for him, like Thrones. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, that's true. Conversion. I feel like that's the few trilogy. scenes that Bail Organa is in, even in the prequels, he like takes over the scene. Well, I I is awesome. one of my favorite scenes with him in it is the very very like one of the last shots of um, Revenge of the Sith, uh, where sorry. Yeah. So yeah, and he like you see the ships taking off, right. and he's just standing to the side and puts his head down and like kind of like pounds his fist very lightly against the against like the ground, not the yeah. ground, but like the table in front of him. Right. And I like I always appreciated that they're specifically showing him, and he's on the forefront of the screen, but he's not the focus of the screen. That he's like even I upset mean, there. Even in even in the Princess Leia book, you see that he's he doesn't really want violence to happen. No, yeah. but Leia's mom was like, I don't remember her name, so sorry. You know, I think it's actually at the attack of the. No, is it attack? It's at the very last scene of either. Yeah, it's right there. You guys know <laughs> what I'm talking about, where they where they're standing out on like a balcony and they can see 
all of the ships taking out. Oh, that's Attack of the Clones. Is it at the end of the Attack of the Clones? That's where then that's where it is. Yeah. When, when he, like, he's standing with the uh with Palpatine. With Palpatine, yeah. Yeah, that's Attack of the yeah, Clones. Yeah. But yeah, so, you see you see he's like there's a lethal attack that happens and he's like, What the F? And yeah. Leia's mom's like, It's bound to happen. Yeah. He's like, he what doesn't, doesn't want have it. to. Yeah. Even but that's the, two books now that they've showed like a ton of stuff that he's doing, but not what he's actually doing. Yeah. And Ahsoka in the, and this book. In the Bloodlines book, you see that they, they build like the new the, the New Republic Senate or whatever, and the middle of it is uh, a giant statue for Bail Organa. And really? Yeah. I didn't it's know like, that. It's he's cool. like the basis of what they want to build the Republic around, is That's cool. what his values were. Yeah. And I would say, based on what the books have been kind of portraying him as, he's more of the glue than even Mon Mothma, I would say, than yeah. the, to the Rebellion. She's just kind of the figurehead of the Rebellion, and he's kind of the glue that's holding it all together. Well, he, was what, the, he was the martyr, too. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what that's how I see it. But anyway, we can move on to some other stuff that we yeah. wanted to talk about tonight. But that's so kind of an update on that stuff. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Map for yeah, so uh, a popular thing that's been going around is uh, something that actually blows my mind that we haven't even considered looking at is the the map from the end of the Force Awakens. So the the whole purpose of the film was to find this map to Luke Skywalker, and they show you this gi- giant thing, and we never really even look at it in detail. So people are trying to kind of spin it maybe around can, and maybe, try to understand. Maybe we can tweet out this picture right here so people can. Uh, yeah, reference. I'll tweet it out uh, afterwards. This way, when you listen along, they can they can check it out. Uh, but basically, there's two schools of thought going on right now: whether or not you take the map and you look at it as the audience sees it, or you look at it as the people standing there would see it. Um, pretty much, I think the best way it works is if you take it from looking at it head on, uh, and because you can kind of identify some major planets. Uh, I think you can identify like Bespin and Hoth, uh, Sullust, Endor, kind of those three main points. What's interesting is, which I didn't even realize looking at it, is the gap that's missing is in the known galaxy. It's not like uh, outside of the, in the unknown regions or outside of the galaxy. It's, it's fairly close to the mid rim, uh, which is interesting. It's, yeah, it it's, is. it's just uh, galact- if we're looking at the map, galactic east of uh, Takodana, which is where Mount Kanata's castle is. So it's very much in the known, in known space. So it's interesting to see like where. Achito is and, and, and how that planet works within the galaxy too. But I don't know what you guys' opinions are on it all. Yeah, it's uh for those that don't know, um, we have a Slack chat that we talk Star Wars in when we're not here on the podcast and Yeah, twenty four seven, that's all we yeah, do. That's actually kind of where <laughs> this podcast was birthed out of. Um, but that's a different story for a different time. But in the chat we've been talking about this map and uh I don't know, just sitting here together looking at it kind of makes it make a little more sense than just talking about it in the chat. Yeah, that's why you should have looked at the link, bruh. Yeah, so, I did, but it's just still... Like, come on, bruh. So cover... So it seems to be, and this is even yeah. outside of us, the two kind sure. of schools of thought yeah. as to what this could be. Because Pablo tweeted that it could have some... Impo- well, right, Pablo said, that like, it could. ask me again in December. Ask me again in December, meaning that it probably is somewhat important. Right. So there's one guy who looked at it all and put a really... There's two people who I saw that put, like, really in-depth... Uh, ideas behind it. One is that it's there's really nothing that we can take out of it, and it just looks like Luke took some hyperspace routes and gets to his destination, and there's not a whole lot of distinguishable planets in there that really make a difference. The other person f- has an interesting trend that, that he just found that Luke takes a very similar path and visits similar planets, Looking, it looks like at least, that uh, one Darth Revan did when he was on his path to find uh, a star map and to l- trying to locate the Star Forge, which is very much where the Star Killer bases. Right. Uh, no, yeah. Do you mind explaining some about Revan? I mean, I know a little bit about Revan. Yeah. So uh, bring it down, Sean. Man. Yeah. Uh, Revan was uh, he was a Jedi who during the like one of the the main uh, Republic v Sith uh, civil wars. Oh, it was the Mandalorian Wars where it started out with, and the Jedi weren't getting involved. Uh, the Republic decided it was, was at war with the Mandalorians, and the Jedi said, said that they weren't going to get involved in the war. And Revan just saw all these innocent people dying and said that he wasn't going to do that. So he kind of broke off from the Jedi Order, right. and a lot, lots of Jedi followed him. So they kind of became the quote-unquote Knights of Revan, if you can you know, understand where the Knights of Ren came from. Never, yeah, never heard of that. Right. Um, so uh, all these Jedi then fought back the Mandalorians and, and won the war. Um, then the kind of the Sith were starting to emerge, so Revan went out to look for them, and he winds up getting captured with him and, and his apprentice, and they're out in the unknown regions. And when they come back, they come back not as Jedi, but as, uh, as, as Sith. So they come back to kind of lay, lay siege and conquest on the galaxies, only for Revan to be betrayed by his uh, apprentice and be left for dead, which is when 
the Knights of Republic video game starts when you play as a character who you, your spoilers alert if you haven't played the Knights of Republic yet, Knights of the Old Republic, it's, uh, you play as a character and you hear about Revan, who's this villain the whole time, when it fi- turns out you are Revan, you just lost uh, your memory when you crash landed, and you, you're getting retrained as a Jedi, essentially, to try to see if they can bring you back, because since you're so powerful. So Revan comes back, becomes a Jedi, whatever. Is this canon? This is it's not, not canon. canon. This is okay. Legends. Um, but in that process, he learns of uh, the Star Forge, which is the super weapon uh, developed uh, above Rakata Prime by the uh, Rakatans. I don't know how that's pronounced exactly. Uh, but they're the super advanced race known for super weapons. Uh, Rakata Prime is in the canon maps now, which is interesting. Um, and it's described as being very similar to uh, Scarif, actually, in Legends. Uh, and Scarif has been no, uh, Rakata Prime has changed names over time as well. So one, this guy is thinking that Rakata Prime and Scarif are actually the same planet, uh, since Scarif and Rakata Prime are both these tropical bases that are known for being, you know, the Empire makes sense that they would put their research there for uh, these super weapons since they invented the Star Forge, which is a weapon that would take the energy from a star right. and, and destroy planets. Basically, exactly the same as Star Killer Base. Correct. Yeah. So all that to say. It seems like there's a lot of tie-ins to Re- from Revan to the new canon. The name, right? The storyline, Rev- a little bit. Revan looks exactly like Kylo Ren, uh, the mask, the mask yeah. and everything like that. Uh, it, I believe originally they were just going to straight up call them the Knights of Revan, and then changed their mind and made it the Knights of Ren. Right. Um, and it so. is, and they and they have been talking about bringing parts of Legends back. And they've even done it in the, the Rebels. They've done it right. in Clone Wars. Well, and Clone Wars is kind of the originals, but yeah. The, and the Re- Rebels, where they find that other Kylo Ren looking lightsaber Yeah, it, that's on Malachor, yes. which was a huge part of uh, Revan's history because he destroyed the planet Malachor, known right. as the, the Scourge of Malachor, which is uh, looks like what, kind of what happened there too. Um, so it seems like they're taking a lot of Revan's history and making it canon very slowly. Right. Well, they've even, they've even shown in the comics a picture of what looks to be Revan and tied it into Mal- uh, right. to, to Malachor specifically. Um, if in the in the Obi and Annie comic, in the Obi and Annie comic, yeah. and in the main Star Wars comic too. Okay. So, um, which is interesting. But so there's a lot of tie-ins, which makes a lot of sense. Right. So. So what would that mean for the Last Jedi? Right. How how how, how is that giving us some speculation? Yeah. So there's another planet that he went to on that path. Um, I I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Um, but there's a city. It, it's basically a, a, an ocean planet with very few islands on it. Uh, sounding familiar yet? And there's only one floating city on that planet, and that city was called Atu. No, don't sh- Very close to good old friend Ochto. So that's all that to say, I don't know if Luke is on this kind of uh, course for self-discovery or trying to figure out what's the right path here because it's interesting that they tie all this stuff to Revan and Revan kind of made that third order. He didn't make it official or anything like that, but when he broke apart from the Jedi to fight the Mandalorians, he created this third group of Force users that operated outside of both the Jedi and the Sith. So it might be kind of a callback to that to see, like, maybe that's the type of thing that Luke has in mind that he's trying to research. Right. I don't know. Or maybe that's what uh, Ren is. Maybe that's what Kylo is. Maybe yeah. that's Maybe he, he was the guy who didn't see what he liked in the Jedi, so he broke apart, and right. it's a more of a darker, which it seems like that's what becomes of Revan as well. So right. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, I can't very, believe we've gone almost two years and nobody broke down the map. I mean, that just it's such a I know, focal it's just point like, of... I just never even considered it. I remember the only thing that pe- back in the day, like right after it came out, so people were saying how based on the location of Achto and Takodana that Luke would have been able to see uh, the, explosions. the explosions. Yeah, I mean, that's, that a whole, like, that's a whole other debate because technically nobody should have seen it, even from Takodana. Right. I mean, it's a laser. It's traveling at hyperspeed space times. It's, right. it's traveling through hyperspace. So nobody should be able to see it since you don't see ships as they travel through hyperspace. Right. You shouldn't really be able to see the blaster fire either, but... Yeah, yeah but more so this. but And, like, the angle from Takodana to Hosnian Prime and the, the just... I won't get into it. Right. I'll, I'll drop it. Uh, but I remember that, that yeah. just drop to bring it up, it. That, that that was about as far as people had gotten. Right. Yeah. But. So, I mean, definitely, I think Luke, in general, very much knows what's going on. Right. I mean... Well, he obviously would have felt it, but... Right. I mean, as we know, like, like Yoda Yoda and Obi-Wan, from the uh, certain point of view book, it seems like they have a pretty good grasp on the entire galaxy and seeing where everybody's at and can just kind of pop in and out and see what's going on. Um, so I'm imagining Luke's at the point where he can do that too. Right. Well, even isn't doesn't Obi in the first one say like I 
I'm feeling a thousand voices cry out to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that one, he knew the event was happening and he saw it happen, so that's a bit different. No, he wouldn't have Oh, no, it. he didn't see it. He was on, he was on the right. ship. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sure. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Get it, Brennan. Tell him, dude. Brennan, you got it, man. Tell him, dude. No, you're good. Wow. He let that one slide. That's 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 special. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but I will say this. Last week, I called the trailer. I'm saying, you guys, no, he's, he's, Mark Hamill's a troll. And I said, no. Yeah. The fact they deleted it means there's a trailer coming. It sounds like, according well, to all sources, that there's a trailer coming. there will be a trailer for The Last Jedi this Monday during Monday Night Football. So make sure make sure to watch that on uh, ESPN. That was great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think halftime, Monday Night Football, we'll get our new trailer. I'd Different. say there's a good, solid chance. If I was a betting man, I'd be betting. Yeah, I'm in. Which so. is a great reason to have people watch Monday Night Football because yeah. the teams. Yeah, was it Vikings Bears? <laughs> yeah, it's Vikings Bears. Yeah. Bears. Snores fest. The Bears. Hey, at least uh, Mitch Trubisky will be getting his uh, his first career start. Yeah, but no one cares about that. We care about Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, but I so mean, so yeah, just to to perpetuate that even further, right before when we sat down to record this, the the kind of some placeholder ads were put up on some IMAX websites right. that tickets will go on sale soon but it's only in right now the on imax it's only california right but they're going up right. they're, they're going, going up, up. october going 9th up. tickets are going to be on sale tic- tic- uh, yeah i think you've heard it here it. first the <laughs> force awakens the force awakens is, is a great example that's what exactly what they did they dropped yeah. it during a monday night football mid-october and target tickets went on sale like that i was sitting on your couch as can i ordered my i know tickets. and we both ordered our tickets yeah. right there yep can we also that. say that rebels is coming out in like two weeks yeah october 16th yeah just watch that new trailer there's a minute long trailer on disney xd's twitter if you want to go check that out um, Super excited for that! It's gonna be a really good season. Yeah, but I'm I'm excited to see Filoni put the final touches on something because the Clone Wars kind of got yeah, pulled out from get underneath of him, and uh, he's a great storyteller, and I'm really excited to see what he does. Yeah. So the Force the, or the Force Awakens. So the Last Jedi trailer. Let's, right. Let's talk a little yeah, bit about. Let's it. talk I know real we quick before, but yeah, we yeah. talked about what we, we want to see. But right. But what do you actually think? Final prediction. Just if you let's let's say like two or three points that you think for sure will be in the trailer. Or do you want to discuss the guy that said it's going to be I two minutes and 40 words, seconds? Like Star Wars that. will be in the trailer. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Matt, forever the this does, interesting the jokes guy. This does. Matt, the thoughts for your thoughts from NPR here. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Millennium Falcon will be in the trailer. Oh, my gosh. Okay. All right. All right. That's that's one. All right. I thought that's two. He said the uh, worst Star, Star Wars, Wars. And there will be <laughs> Millennium Falcon. <laughs> I'm Millennium Falcon. Thanks, Matt. I will bet my house that oh, there's going to be some Matt, sign of yeah. porgs in here. I'm tempted to take that bet because it's open ended and I get a house at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so I take the bet. <laughs> I think we're going there's going to be Snoke in some form. We might not see him, but we're probably gonna hear his voice. Okay. But I also think we're gonna see a lot of the same stuff we saw in the last trailer. So not a lot more, you think? They're gonna hold it from us. They're gonna they're gonna make us scared. I think there's gonna be a solid thirty seconds of unseen footage. The rest of it will be like what though, Sean? So I think it's going to. I think Richie has kind of talked about this before, but I think for sure it's gonna start out uh, like how the other trailer started out with Luke and Ray. This one's gonna start out with Snoke and Kylo. We've they've really kind of held Kylo back from us. But why would they do that? Why would they do that? Yeah, why would they? Sh- why would they like? Why would they show more than they would want to? Because it's a trailer. They want you to go watch it. And they know there's people like us out here who are like, we need more. More, please. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> but, uh, yeah, so I think it's going to start out with Kylo and Snoke. And Snoke probably, I don't know how much we're going to actually, because, like, dialogue-wise, he'll, he'll probably say, like, one foreboding phrase like he did, like, there's been an awakening, like that type of thing. Right. But they'll probably be like, you suck. What the F? <laughs> type right. of thing to Kylo. And Kylo's going to be super brooding with his new scar and looking pretty. You think um, we're gonna see a whiny Kylo? or You think we're gonna see a pissed off Kylo? We're gonna see a pissed off Kylo. Yeah, I think, I think it's gonna. I think he's. I think he's. I feel like in TFA, he was kind of. He's kind of whiny. I think he's gonna dial it up a bit, if you know what I mean. Mm, a little bit there, a little bit. Of bit do, do, do. I think uh, he's. He we got we got whiny Kylo in The Force Awakens, like running to mom, running to Snoke, be like, "Oh, this is happening. I'm sorry." Uh, I think he'll be uh, very uh, in charge. I think he's he's got a point to prove now, and he knows that if he fails again, there's not going to be another chance. This is his final opportunity. He's only got one shot. He's not going to no, win his chance. don't do it. <laughs> Mom, spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti on his sweater already, spaghetti. Spaghetti, spaghetti. It's blue, by the way. What's blue? The spaghetti sauce. 
No, the Cause it's no, Star Wars. No, it's, awesome. so everything's blue. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next time for Matt's cookbook, Star Wars edition. <laughs> Blue spaghetti. Filleted porgs with a side of blue spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Ike, what's your opinion of what's going to happen? Oh, shoot. Okay, I think I've said this before. This is what I want and what I think is going to be there. Okay. A Force good Griffin? emotional John Williams score. The kind yeah. that make you go, oh, my God, it's coming. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm real excited for that, and I think it's going to be in there. Ooh, and, but cool. what's happening during that score? Uh, I think that's emotional. we're going to see that's emotional. Um, I th- I don't know. I think uh, similar to the Force Awakens, there's going to be some nostalgia line drop, yeah, or some nostalgia action. like Leia, and people are going to be like, "Yeah, I think Leia is actually that's yeah." You're going to see point. Leia looking Leia, at Luke, but you're not going to see Luke, and you're going to see her say something, so you yeah, don't really know. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's going to be nostalgia because Leia, and also because Carrie Fisher is passed She's just going to be looking, give her give that winning smile, and go. So that's two, and I'll I'll say some shots just because I know it'll happen. Some shots of Ray training because I feel like it's training montage. Do you think we're gonna see Poe or Finn or Rose in this, or even DJ? I I think some quick shots. I don't think we'll see DJ firing them off. But I do think we'll see more of Poe. Which I'm surprised that they've kept him so hidden. Like we've seen that one picture. Well, clearly he's kind of a central figure to the plot, so they probably won't be able to show much of him without giving things away. That's true. That's a good point. Or if they do show anything, it'll be misdirection yeah that's a good point we had the big misdirection with this last trailer uh, in the force awakens this time with finn igniting the lightsaber yeah and like, everyone's oh. like oh finn's the jedi i mean a lot of trailers do that kind of thing they'll right. show you a character that you know nothing about and so you form assumptions about what they're going to be like and then so yeah. assume nothing correct i'm going to assume that there will be blaster fire Matt, all right, is you're gonna, a, you're <laughs> literally the, Matt is like one, Matt's one comment Matt to, to get fired. Literally becoming the Brennan. There, Edge Lord. <laughs> I'm just <here> so <laughs> <laughs> um, my only thing that I thought of just now, which is which would be really cool. Force Griffin. Oh, just let me, just gotta let me, do it. Just let me talk. In the <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the Force Awakens trailer, we had the like you were saying the the John Williams score, where it was a rendition of the Han and Leia theme. Yes. I think it'd be really cool if we start out with Kyle and Snoke in that area and we get a rendition of Duel of the Fates. <laughs> but just like a chiller version of it. I don't know. That's, that's not Duel of the Fates, though. Yeah, that's yeah. really not Sorry. Duel of Fates. You're right. Yeah. You should be ashamed. That was still me being excited, though. It is a cool <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah, but I think that would be <laughs> that would be really yeah. interesting. But I don't know. Adam, you got anything for us? Yeah, actually, I, I'm gonna have to disagree with Ike. I oh, don't no. think <laughs> there's gonna be an emotional John William John Williams score. No, oh, those no. those tend to come like weeks before the movie. Oh no, those are the ones. Uh, you got you're getting shut I, down there, bro. I, I think it's a, he's making good points. Yeah, I know that John Williams is finished with it. Uh, the whole movie's finished. We yeah. can watch it right now. I mean, we have ten weeks till the movie comes. Who's hacking? Who's got those hacker skills? Disney, we're coming for you. Here we go. Coding on that bandwidth. Coding on that bandwidth. <laughs> Are we advocating uh, hacking on the Well, podcast? listen, I get recommend that, hack. that if you're going to hack it, you should pay for it as well. And I will recommend that if you're going to hack it, you're please Pay your 12 99 for the ticket, and then just fine. You own it. That's how it works, right? Have we talked about that yet? How If we would watch it, if we could. No, just the fact that they're completely done with like three months to go. Yeah. It seems kind of... I don't think we have, but... I mean, there's like I a, try not to think me, about it at night. Yes, it makes me hate them. <laughs> there's like, it's like a, oh, this is done, but we're not going to release it until December. In my yeah. eyes, Ryan Johnson is evil. <laughs> it's kind of like an axiom in filmmaking that like Ooh, directors always say a movie has never done; it's just released. Mm-hmm. That's like something you hear a lot. I guess he's be working on the director's cut. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it just seems I don't know. Well, I mean, and yeah, the fact that it's two and a half hours the from kind of from, yeah. the fact from that it's gonna be the crap. leaks, yeah. it surprised me. So does that mean we're all watching unfinished movies all the time? I mean, if you want to look at it li- aren't our lives unfinished, Matt? We are. Aren't we always oh, watching. We are talking about unfinished? Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> this could open uh, all kinds of know. conversations. Before about that happens, George we are well Lucas. over time, and I'm going to go ahead and call it. Crisis. We're giving the people and, what they want, though. And I'm going to tie up all the loose ends, as our good friend Captain Phasma does. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for visiting and for joining us and for hanging out and talking. We didn't hear you, but you heard us. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for continuing to, to follow along with 100 Days of Star Wars. I know you guys are loving it. Uh, we're well into the Clone Wars. We're in season three now. Yep. We're cruising. Is we're bruising. We're 70, 70 days away from 72. the Force. Seventy-two. Seventy-two days away from That's the correct. Force Awakens. Uh, 
The Last Jedi. Five days till the trailer. <laughs> Five days till the trailer, and then one week away from when we talk about the trailer, and it's going to be great. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time.